that time, so this is his first contact with Herzog. He, he later said that he witnessed Nat Herzog do a model test of this boat, and then he witnessed the trials. The boat made 20.3 miles an hour during trials, so exceeded the 19-mile requirement. He, he, said, he says, everything else is great, I recommend acceptance. Letter down here from the Bureau saying, accept lightning. That's, that's the story of lightning. So this is following their business model. It was their design. The Navy just said, gave, they gave them a requirement for speed, how long they wanted speed, and what kind of water they wanted in the boiler, and that's it. This is at the Herzog technology at that time. The first item is the coil boiler. Coil, it was called a safety coil boiler. It was developed by James Herzog, was Nat's older, Nat and JB's older brother. And it was, it was a safety boiler because it not, did not require a large steam drum. And in those days, the steam, large steam drums were riveted and they were sub subject to explosion. So, and, and this was just a long, um, a long tapered coil. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a cylindrical fashion with a burner in the middle. And this, this boiler weighed uh, about one half the w dry weight of a competing boiler. The competing boilers were a locomotive boiler. So if you think of a locomotive, a uh, locomotive engine, and how the boilers are arranged horizontally, that was the competing boilers. The uh, Nat Harris of that time, they used a two-stage compound engine it had a, a very simple mechanism, it was fairly light, a very simple mechanism for reversing. One thing that Herzog did was engineer design series. You go through his design record books, he took J, uh, James Herzog's coil boiler design and made a series of designs of various sizes and horsepowers. He did the same thing for engines, he designed the propellers, he did the same thing for series propellers, auxiliary engines and everything associated and, and items like that. So he had a very uh, well-organized engineered series so he could adapt from that to build any size horsepower vessel. And he did model testing. Now, as I said, uh, George Converse said that he witnessed Nat Herzog do model testing for lightning. We have not found in Nat Herzog's papers the, uh, any evidence of that model testing. There is in the model room up there a, a one inch to a foot scale model of lightning. It's in the window of the model room. And there also, of course, is a half hull model of lightning. Uh, this photograph here, you see here, was taken in 1915. This is Nat Herzog with a platform suspended off the bow of his yacht Helianthus. He has a, he, he's testing a model. There's a spring-loaded spring device here that he's measuring the pounds force it takes to tow the model. He had carefully calibrated the, uh, the engine RPM of uh, Helianthus so he could, he could order what RPM he wanted from the engineer and he knew then what R, RPM the boat was making, or what speed. And uh, he's having someone take photographs of the model. Uh, to photograph the wake pattern. I'll talk a little bit more about the model testing um, later. That was their technology. Now, it's, it's, it, one way to take a look at how effective that technology was is to look at some tests that were done on launches. And so in October 1880, the Navy didn't have enough money in those days. They couldn't afford to buy torpedo boats. So they bought two 33-foot launches from Harris off uh, they were exactly the same boat, but they had different engines. And then they, they competed that against a one uh, launch built by the Navy, designed and built by the Navy with boiler and engine uh, built by the Navy. And uh, this drawing here, which you, is very hard to see, this is the coil boiler, this is the engine, this is the drawing of that, that vessel that the, um, the Herzog delivered. You can see from the results there, the Herzog weight was one half of that of the Navy boat. The economy of fuel was double. It achieved a maximum speed of 11 miles an hour versus the Navy's eight, eight and a half. And it had much greater carrying capacity and you can read the words, a lot of other advantages. It was clearly 
the, the Harrisoft technology was in a different world from the Navy technology. This same test, were, a similar test were run in 1888 in, uh, in, in England between uh, the Harrisoft 48 foot launch and the launch of a builder named White, who was the builder supplier at the Royal Navy. And there, the, it was a speed trial, and there the Harrow's off to, uh, attained 15 and a half knots, and the British launched 12 and a half knots. So that's a, an indication of the, of the um, technology the Harrow's off had. Now, uh, I mentioned the lightning, and we've, only, we've always, just around here, talked about one lightning, but if you noticed in the, uh, in the uh, list of what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about two lightnings. So in 1876, there was another lightning. This lightning was HMS lightning. HMS lightning was 10 times the displacement and 10 times the horsepower of the US lightning. It was a completely different kind of vessel. This was the, the, the Royal Navy's 47th torpedo boat, not their first, it was their 47th. And it was the first sea going torpedo boat that was designed to, be, to uh, test self-propelled torpedo. The photograph you see here is as she was delivered in 1877. Now, the, the, after the US, the, the Herzog delivered lightning to the US Navy, there was no further development for US Navy torpedo boats for over 10 years. But the Herzog didn't just sit around and wait for the Navy to do something. So in 1879, Nat Harrisoff and J.V. went to England to, de to deliver a 59-foot spark torpedo boat for the Royal Navy. And while they were there, they went to the Portsmouth Dockyard. And they went on board Nat Harrisoff on the 18th of January in 1879, went on board the HMS Lightning. At that time, HMS Lightning was, as shown here, uh, as shown here in, th in this, this is HMS Lightning as she was modified in 1879. This is a large torpedo cannon on the bow, and there are two storage positions for torpedoes, one starboard, another one port, and the torpedo was launched from this torpedo cannon. The uh, I might point out that this, this boat here, this boat here, you can see there's a little frame here. I have a trouble with this. Let's see. I'm having trouble with my pointer. There's a little frame here, and that's how the torpedoes were originally launched on, um, on Lightning, was that they, they dropped that frame over the side and then launched the torpedo from that. Nat Harrisoff went on board Lightning and may have and took a bunch, a set of notes recording the hull construction machinery. He also may have gone on trials on Lightning. But the Harrisoffs did more than that. They assessed the status of technology of torpedo boats. At that time, the leading torpedo boat builders were Thornycraft, Yarrow, and Norman in France. Now these people, I, I, my opinion was they weren't any smarter and they weren't any better than Harrisoff brothers, but, but their navies were spending more on one, in one year on torpedo boat development and machinery development than the US Navy was spending in 10 years. So they had a lot more opportunities to make progress. The other thing going on in England at that time was William Froude had been conducting model testing and starting about 1855, he had his own model tank. In 1861, he had, he had a model tank with, uh, with adequate instrumentation to get good results, and he developed the theories of model testing. All these individuals I just mentioned were publishing information as to the work they were doing and their development work, and it was being published by the Royal Institute of Naval Architects. And so what J.B. and Nat did was they joined the Royal Institute of Naval Architects in 1879, and they remained members until they left torpedo boat work in 1897. 
So they were regularly reading the work of these individuals. And what that resulted is when Nat came back to the US in 1880, he started the systematic testing of models. We have 10 models in the museum that Nat used to test, just as I showed in that previous photograph. He would test multiple models for one design. Uh, he, the models were, uh, they, they would be weighted and they did a number of tests on, on weighting and trim of models to determine the least power condition and determining whether stern squat at high powers is really uh, uh, slowing down the vessel or not. And uh, Nat did considerable work on that. And one thing we hope to do is, is better analyze Nat Herzog's model test work and compare that with what Frude was doing and see what we result from that. The US Navy didn't even think about model testing until they started asking for money from Congress from 1892. So that's about 12 years after Herzog started his model test work. And uh, they didn't really get money for a model test basin until 1897. Now, Nat Herzog, he didn't wait to have a towing tank. He did it out in the harbor, you know, as simple and as practical as he could. But obviously, his results, his results were very good because every one of his torpedo boat vessels met.